What's good you guys? Thanks for tuning in, this is Golden Beats and I'm back with another great mastering preset you can use to master your mixes in FL Studio using FL Studio stock plugins alright? So this mastering chain contains only FL Studio stock plugins because I like to work with FL Studio stock plugins and FL Studio have everything you need to make great mixes. So. I'm gonna go through this mastering chain and then I'm going to explain each and every plugin, what I did, why I did, so that you can have a better understanding on how this mastering chain works. So the first plugin I inserted was the Fruity Balance. And the only reason I use the Fruity Balance on my master chain is to boost the signal um, because I like to start off with the level picking at minus 3 dB and then I do gain match all the way down to the limiter. So what I did was to boost the incoming signal um, to minus 3 dB. So let's play it and let's listen to it. So that was the only thing I did using um, the Fruity Balance. So the second plugin I inserted was the Fruity Parametric EQ2. And what I did with the Fruity Parametric EQ2 was to get rid of everything above 18 kilohertz and everything below 25 hertz. And I also got rid of a few nasty frequencies which are already controlled during the mixing stage um, using buses and etc. And I didn't cut much to reduce those frequencies um, and I cut only with about 1, 2 dB but not more than 3 dB. This is only to clean up those problematic areas that quickly builds up that can mess up your mix and make your mix sound muddy. Alright, so I got rid of a bit of muddiness and um, a, a little bit of nasal sound um, just to make sure I have a cleaner mix. So let's play it without the surgical EQ. Hey. Hey. Right, and this is worth it. Hey. Hey. Right, and already sounds much cleaner. And I reduced the main levels or the or the output gain I reduced with about 1 dB just to make sure that it peaks at minus 3 dB once again after reducing some frequencies in the mix. So the next plugin is the Fruity Multiband Compressor. And on the Fruity Multiband Compressor, um, I set the filter type to FIR and um, I bypassed the low band didn't use the low band to compress the signal within that frequency range as well as with the high band i bypass compression on the high band as well with only the mid band active so what i did was to compress the signal between 108 hertz and 1761 kilohertz or 1761 hertz which is 1.7 kilohertz uh, basically all right so what i did was to compress only within that frequency range to control the dynamics of the mix because that's the area that contains the most um, power or the most energy. So what I do was to compress only within the frequency range to control the dynamic range, right? So usually when we do glue compression or want to control the dynamic range during the mastering stage, the main focus um, is on the kicks and the snares, which is the loudest element in the mix. So we need to make sure that we reduce those um, elements in the mix to bring it closer to the quietest parts for your mix to sound glued. So that's the only thing I did using the Fruity Multiband Compressor. So let's play it without the Fruity Multiband Compressor. Hey. Hey. And this is what it sounds like with the Fruity Multiband Compressor. Hey. So let's continue. Alright, so the next plugin is the Boost EQ. 
So when it comes to boost EQing or additive EQing, you need to listen to your mix um, to see what your mix needs. Um, because if your mix lacks a little bit of high end and sheen, you probably will know that you need to boost some high end to add some sheen um, to your mix. So it all depends on what your mix needs and how you want to mix the sound. So what I did was to boost the 500Hz frequency range, 1.5kHz frequency range and the 5kHz frequency range um, to add some sheen to the mix and open up the mix a little. So let's play it without the boost EQ. And this is with the boost EQ. Let me just turn it, uh, the output gain, so that I, so that my mix can peak at minus three dB. So the next plugin um, was Patcher and what I did within Patcher was to split the mid and side signal. So the mid signal I sent straight from FL Studio back into FL Studio while I inserted a EQ a limiter which I used um, as a compressor and the fruity stereo enhancer uh, on the side signal to do side EQing a little bit of compression and to widen the stereo field using uh, the stereo separation knob right there. So let's go to our EQ. Right, so what I did with the side EQ was to cut everything or to filter out everything in the low frequency range all the way up to uh, 125 hertz um, for the frequency from 125 hertz and below to be in mono. And I cut a little bit of um, frequency within the 166 hertz frequency range, boosted at the 480 uh, fre within the 480 frequency range just to add some body to the mixing as well as boosting the high end to open up the sides a little. So that's the only thing I did using the side EQ, and then I have the fruity limiter, which I used as a compressor. And it was not to compress the side signal, um, but to control the snares that was popping out of the side. So let me play the mix, uh, let me just show you what I did. So the reason I inserted the compressor on the sides was just to reduce these two snares popping out of the sides right here. So that's the only reason I inserted the fruity limiter on the sides, right? And like I said, I have this fruity stereo enhancer which I used just to widen the stereo field using the stereo separation knob and also to reduce the output gain or the volume uh, because of the boosted signals right here or the boosted frequencies um, right here right that increased the levels of the sides a little right so that's the only thing I did on the sides so let me play it without side processing and with side processing all right so in order to hear the difference you have to listen to headphones or a stereo device so let me disable the side processing With it. So the next plugin I inserted was the Fruity Wave Shaper. With the Fruity Wave Shaper, um, I add a little bit of saturation just to, to make my mix sound fatter and fuller. Just to add a little bit of analog warmth to my mix. So let me just disable it first and then I'm going to play it and then I'm going to play it with the Fruity Wave Shaper enabled for you to hear the difference. So let's play it. Hey. Hey. 
and this is with the fruity wave shaper. So that's only to warm up the mix a little. So the next plugin I inserted is Picture and within Picture I created a dynamic EQ just to control the high end of my mix. Just to get rid of a little bit of harshness in the high end and control the high frequencies of my mix. So let's play it. So this was basically just to control the high end of my mix. So the next plugin I inserted was the Fruity Multiband Compressor and I didn't use the, uh, the Fruity Multiband Compressor to compress any frequencies or within any frequency range. What I did with the Fruity Multiband Compressor was to set the frequency range of the high band from 2 kHz to 18 kilohertz and only boosted that frequency using the gain up right here just to open up my mix a little more so let me disable it and let's listen to it hey. Hey. and this is what it sounds like with the fruity multiband compressor So by boosting the frequencies from 2 kilohertz to 18 kilohertz opens up my mix a little more and it also gives my mix a little more clarity. So the next plugin or the last plugin on this mastering chain was the Fruity Compressor. Right? And I usually use the Fruity Compressor as a limiter. So when your settings look like this with a ratio of 30.0 over 1, type of compression hard, attack 0.0 milliseconds, you basically have a brick wall limiter. So your, your threshold will then be your ceiling. So what I did was to play the mix to, and to see where the mix peak mostly and use the ceiling which is the threshold to limit my mix and used the gain knob to boost the limited signal to where I want it to peak which is minus 1.0 dB so let's play the mix and like I said I boosted the limited signal using the gain knob right here for my mix to peak at minus 1 dB alright so it will peak at minus 1 dB and nothing above alright so let's play it So let's do a little bit of comparisons. Let me just solo the input gain and then I'm going to activate the rest of the plugins on this mastering chain right here for you to hear the difference in how this um, or how this mastering chain improves this mix I have right here, right? So let's play it. to drop some comments in the comment section if you want to know more about mastering about mixing um, I'll be open to help you I'm open to give advice and I will be open to share my ideas on how to mix and master in FL studio using only FL studio stock plugins so that's all for now I hope this video was helpful if you like this video please give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel smash that notification bell to be notified in all future tutorials this is golden and beats Thanks for watching, God bless.